Hello, I'm Justin Johnson, uh, writer, director, editor of Mittens, also co-produced with uh, Joe. And I'm Joe Lefebvre. I'm the uh, director of photography and producer of Mittens, co-producer of Mittens. Oh, thank you very much. Um, let's go into the story of Mittens first, and then we'll talk about the production aspect of it. Since Justin wrote it, can you tell us how you came about with this idea? The idea initially came from um, kind of walking around sort of Wisconsin, Midwest area in the winter um, as the as winter sort of uh, gets further along, you notice mittens, gloves, uh, hats, scarves, those types of things sort of like lining the sidewalks. Um, I think I was at UW Oshkosh at the time that kind of came up with that idea. And I thought that, you know, these, these items actually belong to somebody at some point and there could potentially be a story there. And then um, from there, the idea became like, what if this, this object actually had some sort of uh, sentimental value to the person who lost it. And so they could potentially be missing that item right now. Okay. I, the mittens also is a, you don't, it allows you not to focus on the face of the individual as well. With the hat, I assume you want to avoid that. Because, you know, you want to keep the person unident unidentifiable. That's true. I mean, I, I feel like, at least for me, that was never a thought, though. It almost was just out of necessity, given that it was a mitten. But I, I certainly can understand that there might be, in a way that might make it more universal, that it's not, that these people could kind of be anyone. It's not a specific character. But it was not my intention, to be honest. Oh. What, how did that idea come about? Was it something you talked with your DP, Joe, about not showing the person's face? I, I think that as I read the script um, and as, you know, Justin and I kind of talked through this idea, you know, that was something that, you know, I guess like we wanted to create a way to make this sort of connective to pretty much anybody um you know and and it it did come down to us wanting to make a film in a way that you know we we could do it without any any dialogue but you could convey the emotions and, and the feelings um and doing so in kind of a unique fashion um you know focusing on not necessarily a a human character but um that you know, in this case, that mitten as, as that item, uh, as the main character with basically the, the people is kind of the background, but what the journey of the mitten still tying together to, um, you know, to the life of, of the characters that were in the background. Um, so I, I think that early on in the process, we, we did really try to identify that as, as an approach, um, I think the other thing that was kind of important to me was that I wanted, uh, obviously we knew we wanted to tell it completely visually with no dialogue. Um, and I, th I think that part of that was I wanted almost each scene to be one shot. So it kind of just made sense that we'd have, the focus would be the mitten mm -hmm. and, um, that would help us keep sort of the way it's filmed simple and um, keep it visual rather than focusing on these other things, uh, whether it be people, you know, faces, whatever, which were not important to telling that story visually. Joe, I've worked with you many times or- yes. Many days, many days, <laughs> many days, many days, <laughs> yes. Um, I, I thought, you know, you, you did a fantastic job on a film we did together, but I thought Thank that you, you kind of elevated yourself as a DP on this one too. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. 
very beautifully visually. Um, thank you for that. Um, absolutely. And I, I think one of the benefits that, um, and maybe Justin can also speak to this a little bit, um, one of the benefits of working on a project like this was the ability to, you know, have that shared vision. And, you know, like, clearly, we, we had actors, um, but it was less about, you know, certain performance elements, because, you know, it was it was about getting this, the shot this item and right and and finding the the correct um the correct shot to convey certain feelings um so you know justin and i did a did a pretty good job of of planning things beforehand which i think made just shooting this go so so smoothly um but at the same time with such a focus on the visual element to it um you know it, it was it was great to have justin also reinforcing like his vision and us collaborating through that. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of, of the visual elements that, that we were able to, um, to get for this project for sure. And your, your wife, Amanda, also is a producer on this as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, um, she is. And so indeed, you are a producer, she's a producer and Justin's a producer. Yet yeah, yeah. three producers <laughs> for the Yale, anyone butting heads? I don't know, Justin. Did did we butt heads at all? I don't. I don't think we did. I don't. Um, no, I don't think so. It was a pretty smooth working relationship. <laughs> so. Yeah. No. Um. Uh, Amanda, uh, my wife was was great because uh, she she definitely comes from a different. Uh, she's cut from a different cloth than Justin and I. Um, so yeah. she was she was on set. She was definitely helping with problem solving. Uh, there's a particular shot. Um, like, I don't want to give too much of the film away for people that haven't watched it yet. Uh, there's a particular shot that it, it seems so simple um, when it came to the idea of, okay, how do we execute this? Um, but all of the ways that we were trying, um, it, it just wasn't working. And, you know, Amanda's in the background saying, hey, try this, try this. Um, and finally, Justin and I decided to get out of our own ways and, and we listened to Amanda and uh, the the end result was was far better than anything that we had tried for sure. She's got filmmaking in her bones too. <laughs> she has logistics in her bones. <laughs> oh. um, can I ask you guys a, a question about the cast? Was it, did you, even though you don't see the person's face, did you use the same actor for going, carrying it through the same person who's carrying the mittens kind of like throughout i mean obviously since you don't see the face you could just have anyone kind of like sit there but was the same actor all the way through uh yeah it was um i suppose it wasn't necessary but i think it was important to us i i felt like we had a you know a relatively small crew and small, obviously a small cast. And I think it was just important that because this was kind of like all of our, each, each of us the, kind of, this film kind of belonged to us in a way. So I think it was important that we kind of started and finished with, with that original actress. So how's the film doing in the festival circuit? Have you been, I know you were at Wildwood. Have you been anywhere else? Or has the pandemic kind of like stopped everything for you guys for a moment? So we've um, like pre-pandemic, we we had a couple submissions out there. Um, we had submitted to a couple uh, Wisconsin film festivals. Uh, you mentioned Wildwood, uh, which um, yep, that was like probably the last festival um, before the pandemic really set in that we were able to go to. Um, and, and in a way it was, it was kind of like, I've, I've been to Wildwood several times and, um, the, this year or this past year's experience was, you know, a, a little disheartening because it was just as the pandemic was, was taking off. And, 
Um, I remember when Mitten screamed, there was maybe 20 people in, in the theater. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. They usually it, sell out. Exactly, exactly. So it, it was just, it was such a departure. And I think that's kind of when, personally, for, you know, not to dive too much into the pandemic, at that moment, that's when I knew, like, okay, you know, this is this is something to to be concerned about. So we we kind of put um, submissions on pause. But prior to Wildwood, uh, we had actually submitted to the Green Bay Film Festival, and we were the second runner up for uh, Wisconsin films. Um, and that was, you know, I, I think for both of us, that was, you know, that that felt good knowing, you know, that we were we were being recognized in that way. So. Um, Are you looking outside of Wisconsin at all? Yeah, we have a little bit. Um, I, I think that has been a focus sort of maybe starting a couple months ago and we'll probably maybe continue that is focusing on more festivals outside of Wisconsin. Um, we had kind of submitted to a few before, before the pandemic, but I think that kind of Disrupt, disrupted most of those festivals and a lot of them um, just kind of uh, canceled, I guess. But yeah, that's something we want to focus on more, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, one one last thing about that too, like, you know, as, as we've been kind of considering like these festivals and, and the submission process, one of the things that Justin and I have kind of talked about is you know, the accessibility of mittens, um, because, you know, this is a film that doesn't necessarily have a, a language barrier to it. Um, I mean, there are certain elements that are clearly um, regional or even U.S. based, but beyond certain elements, I mean, this is something that would be accessible regardless of, of language barrier. I think, I think, um... You, you handed it in um, March? March? I think so. Yeah. Or April, somewhere around there. I, I get so many films, it's hard to know exactly what sometimes of details. But, um, you know, watching that film, I thought it's even relevant with what's going on with COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, many people lost people during it, and it's might help them a little bit just watching it and dealing with that grief somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And and thank you for that. And I, you know, I, I think that is one of the things that, you know, and again, I, I don't want to speak for Justin in, in this situation, but to me, I think that's one of the the elements of, of film that I I find so interesting and one of the reasons why I love it so much is, you know, you, you have these moments and you have these things that occur within your life. And then there's, you know, the, the film piece of it and, and film is just so powerful in that regard where it can, it can change how you look at things and, you know, your life experiences, how it connects with film just changes and, and develops. Um, and I, and I think that that's, just one of the the powers of, of film for me um and and it's it just makes me it, it just makes me love doing projects like this um just to just to see those connective tissues between the fiction side of things and and reality well thank you thank you both for doing this interview um we, we uh are hoping everyone will enjoy mittens as much as we have here Thank you so much. Thank you.